if we have a force, we can figure out, first off, how long this lasts. How long the object was in contact with the force sensor. How are we going to figure that from our ground, or from our curve here? But, well, wouldn't we set it to zero? Absolutely. Divide both sides by t, we get uh, 3.034 times 10 to the 6th t equals 1.910 times 10 to the 4th. So t is equal to 1.910 times 10 to the 4th divided by 3.034 times 10 to the 6th. the total time for the collision. You go all the way from here to right there. The total time for the collision. Well, now that we have that, we can figure out the impulse. The impulse is equal to the integral of the force with respect to time from zero to our time final, which is 0.006295. So the integral of the force, which is negative 3.034 times 10 to the sixth t squared plus 1.91 times 10 to the fourth t, from 0 to 0 0.006295 with respect to time. Please take the integral for me. Uh, look. Remember, this is the initial, this is the final. So it's from 0 to 0 0.006295. So the impulse is equal to, we'll just plug in the numbers here, negative 3.034 times 10 to the sixth times 0 0.006295 cubed divided by 3 plus 1.91 times 10 to the fourth times 0 0.006295 that squared divided by 2. The impulse equals. What do we get? 0 0.126. 1588. 1588. With uh, sig figs here, we'll go 0.1262. What are the dimensions on that? Or Newton seconds. Either one, they are the same thing. I'll write Newton seconds this time. OK. We figured out the impulse, which is the area underneath this curve. Okay. Remember that the impulse is e also equal to the average force multiplied by the total change in time. So the average force equals the impulse divided by delta t, or 0 0.126158 divided by our total time, which was 0 0.006295. Zero four newtons. So if you look, our average force somewhere around twenty point zero four newtons. Great. What was the mass of the object, please? Forty point five grams. That's equal to zero point zero four zero five kilograms. Okay. One of the things that we assumed is that the imp the impulse force approximation. So the force of gravity would be equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity, or 0 0.0405 times 9.8. So one of the things we assumed is that the force during the collision is much, much greater than 
the, all the other forces, the only other force acting was the force of gravity. Was it? So notice it is, but again, this is an approximation. It's not perfect. It's, it's going to be an approximation. Okay, so we have figured out then the net force. We have an equation for it. It's right here. Well, if we have the net force and the mass, we can figure out the acceleration because we know Newton's second law, or the one from last year, the sum of the forces equals mass times the acceleration. We can figure out the acceleration. It's equal to the net force divided by the mass. So the acceleration of the object is equal to negative 3.034 times 10 to the sixth time squared plus 1.91 times 10 to the fourth t, all divided by the mass, which was 0 0.0405. What is the acceleration as a function of time of this object? acceleration as a function of time for this object. We're going to take the derivative of the acceleration as a function of time. Anybody know what it's called? Jerk. Nice. It's called the jerk. We're going to figure out the jerk. The derivative of the acceleration as a function of time is the jerk. And we're going to set this equal to zero. So we're going to set a derivative with respect to time of negative 7.506 times 10 to the seventh t squared plus 4.716 times 10 to the fifth t. Please take the derivative of that for me, Michael. Five zero six times two. <laughs> Somebody help me out. I need to something here. Times ten to the eighth. Oh, we just missed it. It's an important piece. Uh, plus, and then this is just going to be four point seven one six times ten to the fifth. This we're setting equal to zero. So we get time is equal to 4.716 times 10 to the fifth divided by 1.5012 times 10 to the eighth. Thank you. I thought I had it up there. Okay. Derivative of the acceleration of the function of time, we set it equal to zero, we solve for t. This t is? This is the time for the maximum force. The time for the maximum acceleration, right? And it should be approximately half of the total time. 